Hey guys, this is Clayton with Everything Ponds. And today I want to talk about submersible pumps versus external pumps. So when would you want to use a submersible versus external? Uh, what's the benefit of each? Uh, if you have that question, then stick around. All right, so a submersible pump. Uh, just like it sounds, you put it in the water and it's actually quite simple. You just basically put it in the water and turn it on, connect a pipe up to it and it will pump water. So you can either put that right into your pond, some people do that, or even better, you put it in a skimmer and then it will draw water through the skimmer which collects floating debris and then pumps water out of the pond. You can then pump it to the top of your waterfall or through a filter. So an external pump sits outside of the pond and it's a little more complicated set up because you have to worry about priming the pump. Um, but once it's set up, uh, it can be more energy efficient. So if you have a larger flow rate, um, then you can get some power savings. It's also a little more reliable, we find, just because it's not submersed in water. Things that are in water generally break down quicker, uh, maybe a little bit corroded. Um, but with the external pumps, you might get a little bit uh, more longevity. They're also, generally speaking, a little easier to fix since they're more modular. All right, so I mentioned priming the pump in the case of an external pump. With a submersible pump, you don't have to worry about it because the water naturally flows into the pump. It's naturally primed. It's impossible not to prime a submersible pump if it's in water. Uh, with an external pump, though, you have to make sure the pump is filled with water before you turn it on. If the pump is just full of air, it's not going to pump anything. It cannot suck water out of the pond and fill the pump. You have to do that before you turn it on. So there's two situations uh, that describes most priming situations. The first is, let's say you have a pond, here's the surface, and your pump is below the pond surface and elevation. So it's outside the pond still, but we're talking elevation, it's below the pond. Let's say it's on a hill, or you've dug a pit, or a pump vault, or somewhere to hide the pump. In that case, if you connect a pipe between that pump and the pond, gravity will naturally push water into the pump and self-prime it. So in that case, that's a self-prime situation. So the second situation is a little more complicated. That's where the pump would be sitting outside the pond, but above the surface in elevation, like just say on the shore, or maybe next to a shed, or somewhere else where it's not in a hole or a hill or something. So in that case, the pump is gonna be full of air and gravity is not gonna be able to push water uphill to the pump. So in that case, you need to manually prime the pump. So what does that mean? Uh, usually we use a device called a priming pot. So you put that right next to the pump, it has a lid on it, and you can fill it with water and that will fill the pump and the pipe. Um, there is one more piece of equipment you need in order for that to work, it's a check valve, and you put that right at the water intake, and that's a one-way valve that only allows water through one way. So when you fill the pump and the priming pot, the, the check valve will hold the water in the pipe. And so once it's full, the pump will be primed, you basically just turn it on, and then the system will naturally pump, and you're good to go from then on. And since you have a check valve, if you ever turn the pump off, the water will stay in the pipe and it'll be ready to turn right back on. So the only time that you really need to do the priming process is at the very beginning or if for some reason you drain your pond, like let's say for winterization or anything like that, then you'll have to go through that priming process again. Would you want to use a submersible or an external after all that? Generally speaking, if you've got a smaller backyard pond or something that's you know a couple thousand gallons or less, Generally, a submersible pump is the way to go. The energy savings of an external aren't really coming into play at that point. Uh, it's a lot easier to install. Just put it in your skimmer, turn it on, you're ready to go. Um, if you're doing a more pro-level pond or pumps that have higher flow rates, uh, let's say you're doing a 5,000 gallon pond with a flow rate of 5,000 gallons per hour, you'll probably have some energy savings if you went to an external pump. So it'll probably cost a little more to buy the pump initially, but let's say if you could save 30, 50, 70 dollars a month in energy, in the end, you could actually pay the pump off with the energy savings. So a lot of times we recommend external pumps in these higher flow rate situations just for that. You can actually save enough money to pay your whole pump off. All right, thanks for checking out this video on submersible pumps versus external pumps. If you have any questions at all, you can check out our website, Everything Ponds. You can also email us or give us a phone call. We'd love to help people choose the right equipment. You guys have a great day.